Welcome back to the Home Inspection Whisperer show today. I've got a very special guest. It's Grace with Restoration One. She removes and replaces and repairs mold. Yeah. So i um, excited for you to be here today. And thank, you. thank you for taking the time out of your day. Uh, this is a unique podcast because normally we talk about business or, you know, like a specific topic and we haven't had a mold person come on yet yeah. today so, or ever. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> uh, before we get into it, I do have an announcement to make. Uh, I'm going to be in Vegas uh, Tuesday the 28th. I know this is like a really quick warning, but it just happened to be that way. And I found out that the super conference is going on in Vegas at the same time. So I'm doing a small meetup at the Abel Baker Brewing Company at 730 Tuesday the 28th. So if you want to come and have a beer with us, we're going to hang around and talk about home inspections and drink some beer, IPAs preferably. <laughs> <laughs> so um, coming in, uh, this podcast is about mold. And uh, one statement that I wanna make at the beginning of the podcast is home inspectors are not required to report on mold, but it does not stop us from saying, hey, that looks funny, right? you know, have it further evaluated and mm -hmm. call someone like Grace or a mold inspector to come in and try to figure out is the mold dangerous? right? or uh, does it need to be removed and replaced? So uh, it never stops us from learning more. And that's pretty much why you're here, to yeah. try to give us the most information possible. So they know who you are, and yeah. maybe they hope they know what you're talking about. <laughs> Introduce yourself and let us know how long you've been doing this. Yeah, hey everyone, my name is Grace with Restoration One of Central Houston. So Restoration One's actually a national franchise. You can probably find us just about everywhere. Um, I have been doing this for about three years now. We are IICRC certified for mold remediation. Um, we are a licensed mold remediation company as well. You need to be both. Um, so I've been doing this about three years now. I found myself in this position on accident. <laughs> My really good friend opened up a restoration one and <laughs> he kind of tricked me into working for him. And then I just started getting really interested in the whole mold remediation portion of what we do because we do water damage, fire damage, mold remediation, and... <laughs> Now I'm here. <laughs> so it's not just mold. But, no. But because we're in Houston, I'm guessing that's your primary source. Yeah. So so we do a lot of water damage, which if water damage is not remediated in a timely manner, it just leads to mold. With the uh, environment here in Houston, <laughs> there's mold everywhere. Yeah. Um, any small amount of water damage can create a bigger problem if not attended to at an appropriate time so yeah because we just had a referral for you just recently yeah. where a bullet went through a roof and she had that little leak mm -hmm. and then she stuck a fan in the attic which created even a better environment yeah. for the mold to like grow faster and you yeah. And that was just a, I mean, it was small. Yeah, was small. I mean, with a, an extent, mold needs two things. Um, it needs moisture and it needs humidity. And we have both of those things in Houston pretty much every day. Nice. So I slightly interrupted you with uh, your introduction. I'll <laughs> yeah. let you keep going. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, we service the greater Houston area pretty much everywhere in Houston. If you call us, we'll be able to take a look. Um, so we do mold remediation, which is the... Um, removal of the mold. Um, a mold tester is a little bit different. So technically in the state of Texas, you cannot remediate and test for mold. Okay. So I can visually look and I can look for different signs that would tell you that you have mold. But if you want to know what kind it is, I can't tell you that. Okay. You yeah. Know, there's all these kind of weird regulations in Texas. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's like that everywhere, but... Uh, so that's actually interesting. It's kind of the same thing as us doing inspections, but mm -hmm. we can't repair the things that we find. Correct. We have to say, okay, yeah, I get it. It's Completely kind of like a it. conflict of interest type of situation. Mm -hmm. So, so I could in walk in here in this room and say, oh, wow, you have a huge mold problem. Like, let me test for it. And I could do the remediation and say, oh, no, it's not gone. Got to do more. Need more money. Right, exactly. So. Yeah, so protecting the consumer. A yeah, bit. absolutely. So, um, yeah, that's really it about me. I mean, um, we do we do residential. We do commercial. Um, multifamily. We see mold pretty much in anywhere you could ever think of. So three years. Yeah. So what's, like, the worst job you've seen out of the three years? Oh, 
Well, we ju- <laughs> it kind of makes me laugh, but we recently had, uh, we're still working on it actually, we have a house that was vacant and um, in Houston we had the freeze back in February. We think that the pipes burst, but the house is vacant and the AC's not on, so it's just been sitting. Ooh. And it was discovered in, I think, when are we, September right now? August? And there was fungus growing from the walls. Ooh, like growing like, out? Yeah, like like mushroom type fungus. Oh my goodness. Well, yeah. <laughs> what, do you have to tear it down or do you just have to rip everything out? Everything has to come out. Everything and then you'll have to spray it down with like a, what a borate spray or something. Yeah, like so we have to just make sure the source is fixed first. So in this type of situation, there's actually other problems like roof leak and no AC and all the things. So we really just have to remove materials. Source needs to be fixed. Then we can continue the remediation. Yeah. So you remove everything. <laughs> yeah. Down to the, the studs. Find the source. Yeah. And then oh, that sounds. I don't even want to know the price. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Not so, for this one. <laughs> so I guess this is, uh, we have some questions here. Yeah. And one of the most common questions, I guess, you probably get all the time is, mm -hmm. you know, how fast does mold grow? Because, you know, we've done inspections before. Mm -hmm. And then I'd say this is a few years ago, but I've done inspections and then we left. And then three months later, a client would call and be like, hey, there's 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 a bunch of mold in this closet. Mm -hmm. You know, can that happen overnight? Or does that like does it take does it take months? You know? That's a that's a really good question. And yeah, we do get it all the time. So restorable mold particles like um, aspergillus and penicillin penicillin can actually um, begin in 24 to 48 hours. But mm -hmm. you need the presence of moisture and elevated humidity. Okay. Um, visible mold will grow in like seven to 14 days. Okay. So it does take a little while and you need that elevated moisture and humidity the entire time. So in a closet, happens all the time. Right. It's because there's no, sometimes there's no air registers in there. Right. And then the doors close. Right. They turn off the AC because they're not, they don't want to pay the energy bills anymore. And that then, is the biggest thing. And then boom, like. Never well. turn off your AC in Houston, Texas. <laughs> the, the humidity is just so high. Right. And their houses are like perfect environments to. So perfect. To create mold. Because they're yep. like closed in and we build them so airtight. Yep. And then there's new builds. Yeah, I could see that. They're Definitely. not meant to breathe. They're really, the houses here are not meant to breathe. This is a, a whole, whole thing that we see all the time. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you said you keep referring back to like you need moisture and we say this all the time. Yeah. So what level of moisture? Are you talking like just maybe like a little condensation on an air register? Or are you talking just like an actual steady drip? Both. Um, it's really both. If you have a little bit of condensation on your air register and also um, like a higher humidity in a space, you need you need both. So mm -hmm. if you're you have a little bit of moisture, like say in a bathroom, but you have airflow and your humidity is lower, um, like your HVAC system is going. If your temperature is under, it needs to be around like seventy. Mm -hmm. um, you're okay, but if your temperature is elevated, your moisture is elevated, that's going to raise your humidity, then you start to have those types of problems. 70? We keep our houses around like 75, 76. Is that still too high? No, I think mm. that's okay. I, it's just you also don't want to have those moisture problems. Once you get into like 80, 85, 90, that's when you have a lot of problems, like attics, yeah. essentially. Yeah. That's what I tell a lot of people, you know, don't go above the 70s because like that's when actually your houses start to crack. Yeah. Like our sheetrock is not, you know, it needs to be somewhat cool and people turn off their ACs and they come home and there's cracks all over the place. It's like, yeah, you, you just uh, created the, this expansion, you know, this yep. heat in this yep. expansion. Yep. So, yeah. um, all right, nice. So you need to keep mold out of your home. You need airflow. Right. No moisture. Correct. And no closed spaces. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, there is, people need to realize this, there's mold everywhere. Right. There's mold outside, there's mold inside. You're going to have some type of microbial growth. Um, it's just, is it elevated to a point where it becomes harmful? Like harmful to yourself. So, yeah. And 
And how long would it take for like mold to actually become harmful? Say you have a leak and you start to see that visible mold. Uh -huh. Is at that point in time it's it's harmful to you? Um, it depends on the type of mold. So there's hundreds of thousands of types of mold. Right. Um, some are very dangerous and some are not. Also, it depends on the person. So it depends on your um, your immune system. Um, do you have asthma? Do you have things like that? Mold affects different people different ways. Like for me, example, for an example, I can go in a house and my throat will start to like scratch and like close and I'm I, I know this house is moldy I don't know where it is so you're a human walking but I know test. <laughs> I, um you know my my owner it, he walks in a house and he said my face is itching like I know that this house is moldy wow okay it's just certain types of mold will trigger certain types of things in different people I guess um so if you can see the mold it's definitely time to get it assessed okay um for sure uh if you see like around your registers, it's dark and black. Um, definitely need to get it assessed. Yeah, that is a common thing that we see in especially like the older homes with those like metal grates. Right. So when if you see, we write it up all the time, mm -hmm. you know, the mold around the air registers mm -hmm. and we recommend just to clean it. But right. like, what would you recommend since you're the specialist? Like what, what should home inspectors actually be saying? So what we usually recommend is first of all, make sure the AC is balanced correctly okay. because it shouldn't be creating that extra condensation. Right. Sometimes the unit is too big for the house, too small for the house. I mean, I'm not an HVAC professional, right. so I just refer to an HVAC professional. Well, that is 90%. And most yeah. of the time it's too big. It's like a five ton unit in a 2,000 square foot home. Or something right. Like that. Yeah. So you want to make sure that um, also that people are using those vents so they're mm -hmm. not creating that condensation. So it, like they're closed and it's blowing too much air onto it or something? Yeah, yeah. And then also it, what we do is we'll clean the ducts. Um, sometimes the ducts need to be replaced depending on what kind of uh, ducts they are. Too many air leaks or something? Yeah. Um, we'll clean the ducts and then usually what we do is we just, um, you know, we'll treat it um, with antimicrobial, clean the ducts, which means we use like a HEPA vacuum, which is going to get all of those spores out of the air. And then um, usually we just replace the, the, the vents covers because... Okay. You can clean them, but it's... Yeah, they're metal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you have someone clean them, it's more cost effective to just replace them. Gotcha. They're like nine bucks. Yeah, they're not crazy <laughs> yeah. expensive. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's generally what we see. All right, nice. So the next question I have is, so we see, you know, kind of mold spots all the time as home inspectors, you know, and just in weird spots like bathrooms and stuff. Mm -hmm. how, how, as a home inspector, could we like identify the dangerous mold? Because it's a common question we have all the time. It's just like, hey, is this mold dangerous or not? And my, most of the time I always have to answer like, I don't, I don't know, you know, because the, it requires some very specific testing. But is there a way that I could visually see mold and be like, hey, that, that's dangerous, you know? I don't think visually you can see it. And the problem is, is if you have one tiny little spot of mold that has grown through sheetrock or something like that, what's behind it? Right. So it could be a bigger problem behind it and you just don't really know. Also, you don't know how the new homeowner is going to react to that. Right. Because, because like I said, some people are very sensitive to all different types of molds. Some people are not sensitive at all. Gotcha. So visually, you just want to make sure. What I always recommend is make sure the source is fixed, right? Um, if there was like some lingering damage, I would just call in, call in a professional. I mean, if it's a small spot, it can be taken care of by the homeowner. You can kind of try to DIY it. Mm -hmm. um, but if it's a larger area, I usually recommend to have it looked at by a professional because it can only get worse. Right. Even like a dormant mold, a mold spot that's not getting worse, if something else happens in that bathroom, Right, so you need to identify. It's going to activate, yeah, it's going to source. activate that. Yeah, It yeah. just doesn't just grow in walls. It's like there's water coming from somewhere. Yeah, and yeah. in bathrooms, I mean, obviously there's water in our bathrooms, um, but you want to make sure like your your fans are working and, and your HVAC system is on and, you know, you're keeping it as dry as possible, mm -hmm. then you won't have that mold problem. Gotcha. Um, so just a 
I know it's kind of a, we're taking a right turn a little bit, but say you're a homeowner uh-huh. and you're in a home, uh-huh. like what kind of symptoms? I know you're saying it affects everyone differently, but right. like, is there like a common symptom where you'd be experiencing a lot yeah. th- where you're like, hey, there's there's mold in this home or an inspector could walk in yeah. and be like, man, I'm pretty sure there's mold. Yeah. So a musty smell is a huge indicator of mold, like a dirty sock smell. Right. A musty smell, it smells wet. Anything that smells like wet wood or wet, um, you know, that musty smell. Also common symptoms that people have are, you know, a lot of headache. If you're doing a home inspection and you're in that house for, you know, how long does it usually take you? Three, three and a half hours. If you have a headache after, that's a good indicator that there's probably mold in that house. So we didn't see anything visually, but, you know, we just constantly smelled that musty smell. Yep. And uh, we started feeling, you know, slow. Right. Yeah. You're like, hey, maybe they should have this further looked at yeah <laughs> or it, if you're always slow you know, don't recommend mold for inspections on that. and you can just if you see evidence of water damage mm-hmm. those are really just good visual indicators if they're going along with you know if you're sneezing or you have a headache or you have a scratchy throat or um you you have that smell those are all kind of good indicators that you can say hey this might you might want to have you know a mold tester come out sometimes if there's no visual signs you would want a mold tester to do an air sample right that's Um, what we normally recommend i think that's the way our what our comment reads it says you know have this further evaluated and it recommends for mold sampling yeah to be done to identify if the mold is bad or not you know correct you know leading into the next question you know how sick can you get from mold you know i mean i bet it can get pretty bad you know dementia or something yeah you know? some people do end up with mold poisoning okay. and so it affects like your mental abilities your immune system your it, it gives people really bad asthma i think it also has led to different diseases um i don't there's a whole bunch i don't know <laughs> you know, you don't, you know. Have to, you don't have to go down the list right but, but it, it can get really bad like, it can yeah. and it again it's going to affect different people differently mm-hmm. so what are your your um how's your immune system um and what are you allergic to some people are highly allergic to mold and some people are just not at all correct wow so you could be like in a house full of mold and they're like i didn't experience anything at all uh, and then yeah the just move in and they're like your house is full of mold and and then the lawsuit starts, I'm assuming. Yeah. yeah. And people who come from different, te- like, for instance, different states, mm-hmm. people who move here, there's not mold in other states like there oh, is yeah. here. Yeah, and we grew so, up with it. Right. right. And so where you grew up here, and so you're kind of more immune, your personal immunity is probably immune to a lot of things. But if you came from a different state where it's drier or there's not any humidity, you don't have those same types of immunities. Right. So like we get a lot of people from California or Arizona, like mold doesn't exist there really. Right. You yeah. know? Perfect environment, just, <laughs> just filled with earthquakes and but, bad politicians. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you yeah. know, the Gulf Coast is the mold capital of the world, yeah. Florida. So we're just used to walking around feeling slight, with a slight headache. Yeah, I guess. I mean. <laughs> and they're like living in their perfect environment over there. I guess. Yeah. If you want to call it that. <laughs> yeah. So um, a lot. All, I mean, this happens all the time. Mm-hmm. You walk into a bathroom, you, mm-hmm. know, you see, you know, the black stuff on the walls. And so how do you identify if it's like mold or uh-huh. mildew? Okay. So I get asked this question all the time. It's a really good question. Right. Mildew is actually a type of mold. Okay. Um, mildew is just going to be on a like a flat surface, something that's non-porous. Like tile. Tile, right. Um, so non-porous surfaces can be cleaned. Right. Um, porous surfaces need to you need to physically remove the mold. So if we see it on the tile and in the grout and stuff, not a big deal. Right. But if we see it like on the roof of the shower and it's filled with you know, the, the mold is growing up there and they right. haven't been running their fan. They've been showering those hot showers with the door closed. Right. The sheetrock has to come down. Yeah. Um, even the grout. Um, so the grout is actually um, a, a surface. It is porous and it's it's what mold is going to try like kind of feed off of. Those kinds of things can be cleaned, but it's just going to mildew. It will just keep coming back. Keep coming right. Back. So, so you actually have to like grind out 
the grout. Yeah, so you want to make sure that you're running that fan, right? When you do have a shower, if you... So you don't have to grind out the grout. You just have to change the environment so it doesn't yeah. grow. Okay. Yeah. Um, you can clean it. And you don't want to use bleach. Okay. Um, that was actually one of my questions. Yeah, you don't no. want to use bleach. Bleach actually doesn't kill mold. It just bleaches the color. Oh. Yeah, so you just... It just changes the color to white, and it will just keep coming back. Mm. The, the moisture content of bleach is actually too high, and mold actually feeds off of that. Wow, that's, a, that's actually new to me. I've always heard... You know, like one, two parts water, one part bleach or something like so that. So you want to mm. use actually just like a detergent, mm. like an antibacterial. Like this, like, would you clean your clothes with? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you want to use a detergent or an antibacterial to clean that. And then, um, especially on porous, on non-porous surfaces, you can wipe it off. Mm -hmm. um, but on porous surfaces, you want it, the moisture content is the main main problem wow so yeah so you just like you know detergent you know and just scrub at detergent it detergent and, and water you can make um like detergent and water i think it's 50 50 again we use a little bit different of products right. um Probably but mold specific <laughs> yeah <laughs> we use a little different of product but um like 50 50 and you can especially in your shower if it's a pore surface if you wipe it off it's gonna come back yeah so uh, I did not. That's actually, you know, that's probably one of the best part of the podcast because, I mean, I think everyone thinks bleach kills mold. Yeah, they do. It's because of the internet and the and the news tells you that it does. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> my dad told me that. You know, <laughs> like, and then his dad's dad probably told him that, right? I'm so. sure. I'm sure. And it's also they say, you know, all detergents kind of, and bleach and all this have all these. Um, kills 99% of whatever mm. but you have to do it according to the package like what the actual instructions are right does it need dwell time does it need you know to actually make it work also all of those types of solutions are tested on stainless steel oh so yeah Cl anything can kill it right exactly yeah so it's not <laughs> doesn't have that harboring environment like sheetrock does or no anything like that. and um mold actually mold's main source of food is cellulose which is what a sheet rock is made of yeah so and everything like building yeah. material <laughs> yeah every building material insulation all of that kind of fun stuff um all right so you know you're talking about like remediating it yourself a little bit which mm -hmm. is always probably not 100 percent recommended because mm -hmm. you make your money that way too as well but like if they wanted to remediate it on their own and yeah. not just use detergent like what product would probably work best so you you, you have to there's a couple of things you have to do you have to if it's a porous surface like sheetrock you have to remove it okay if you clean it or you paint over it it's gonna grow right through just grow right back and probably yeah. be worse behind it's gonna be doing. worse um so you have to remove it um anything like 10 square feet you can remove it and the also the other main part is you have to make sure the surface is dry and then you can clean it and then like the studs for example then you can clean it and then you want to make sure the source is fixed right? right so if you remove the little piece of mold but your bathroom still has super high humidity and you never use the fan and it's, all of that kind of come right back yeah it's coming back yeah <laughs> gonna come right back so so um you know fixing it yourself but say it just gets out of hand and it's too you know it's to the point to where you actually have to show up and you know maybe remove like a whole bathroom or something like that mm -hmm. does insurance ever kick in for the homeowner does it ever cover mold issues so the thing with mold is by the time most people see mold or have a problem it's kind of neglected you. so your homeowner's insurance says that you're required to prevent secondary damage secondary damage is mold right so um if you have you know a sink overflow or a pipe burst or something like that you should immediately uh, fix it right. right you should immediately um, you know, get with a company like us who does water damage or make sure clean up the water yourself. Um, 
try to if it's not that bad um and that's usually covered by your homeowner's insurance it when you wait and then you say oh well now i have this black under my sink and then your adjuster you can file a claim but your adjuster will come and say how long has this been going on right and you'll so, say so what's oh, the I've correct answer for, no, <laughs> i mean if it's black they're gonna look at it and say like it doesn't get black overnight right you know um so you really just want to attend to any damage from your ac from your roof from your bathroom from anywhere as soon as possible so as soon as you have that hvac leak you file the claim like yeah. immediately yeah and if the secondary damage happens after the claim you've already started the actions exactly to, exactly to so, yeah but if you walk in and the whole bathroom is just filled with mold, insurance is going to be like, no, no. Correct. Yeah. They're going to be like, how do you even look at this for? <laughs> yeah, no, I understand. So we do some inspections sometimes. And, you know, that's one thing that they teach us inspections, all, or at least I was taught inspections. Whenever mm -hmm. you start doing inspections, you like have zero judgment. You know, like how do people live the way they do? It's just yeah. like, you, you never know where people come from. You never so, know. Like, so it's just like you just say it is and what it is what it is and you just document <laughs> it but you're right like how are you just sitting there looking at that mold black spot forever and then just not do anything i don't like, know sometimes oh. i'm i'm very confused <laughs> no, I, I bet your stories are might even be worse than mine because you come in to like whenever it's like the worst the worst yeah, <laughs> yeah. i've had people just be wearing like full ppe in their own house pre-covid right <laughs> I like how you had to announce that because that's that could be normal now. It it is normal, um, <laughs> yeah. but just wearing full PB in their own house and yeah, this mold has just been here for a really long time. And I'm like, okay, all right, let's try to fix all it. righty, <laughs> and let's start the quote. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're funny. All right, uh, we're gonna take a quick break. Um, in this break, I just want to let y'all know that we do sell our home inspection comments. And in the home inspection comments, we actually have a very a mold specific comment just saying, you know, this isn't something that we look for and it needs to be further evaluated and it is written better than what I just described it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, also, please, if you do listen to the podcast, make sure that you join the Facebook group and ask the questions that you would like on the podcast. And then also hit the like and subscribe button on the YouTube channel. That is how the channel grows and we get our content out there. So um, actually this one kind of, we're going to, take a different turn a little okay. bit and then <laughs> talking about you know how someone sits there and insurance and I guess it doesn't take a different turn my ADD is kicking in but you know so what is the lowest cost that you could expect out of a mold repair say like you have that little spot in the bathroom and I know mm -hmm. it's relative but say it's small or like let's go with that lady that where the bullet hole was in the roof yeah and you had to remove the sheetrock you had to dry mm -hmm. it out replace mm -hmm. the sheetrock and paint well, and I'd, I'd say that was probably a small that was probably job. the smallest one we've ever done. Right, that yeah. was about the smallest one we've ever done. So whenever we have to remove materials, there are limited situations, like in an attic, where we don't have to remove any materials. We can just clean. Okay. Um, um, we do use specialized equipment, so sometimes we have to dry. Sometimes, and we always have to air scrub, and we have to um, HEPA vacuum. So we always have to do those things, and we have to clean. And we usually have to s seal um, this the area. So there are limited situations, but that was about the smallest one that we did. Um, so if we have to remove materials, do our whole mold remediation situation, and put it back, I, you're looking pretty much at you know fifteen hundred dollars so probably. Was, yeah, fifteen hundred dollars to like completely, and then say hypothetically speaking does it come back does it y'all and they didn't do anything it was just from y'all's repair it, it wasn't removed is that still covered in the 1500 or so that yeah i it's always kind of a toss-up because was there a new problem is mm. this the same problem we always have to assess it right. because sometimes um we get into situations where we tell the homeowner like this needs to be repaired they say oh yeah i got it got it repaired and we say okay we're gonna go ahead and with our portion now and then they didn't get it repaired. It didn't change. But yeah. if for some reason it was our our mistake, of course, of uh, you know, yeah. um, things happen. No, yeah, like, I mean the you know. same thing in the home inspection world. Yeah. yeah, I guess that was kind of a trick question. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. No, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah no. that was the. But when you have to, especially when you have to paint and things like that, right. um, you no, know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sheetrock's not, you know, like, and that, and that was in a weird stairwell too. So yeah, you, you can't know, paint a patch. Yeah, you had to like re replace a whole section. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. I think most good reputable roof bare minimum for them to even fix your roof is fifteen hundred dollars. So oh yeah, you know, a mold replacement on a small job i mean 15 so you're expecting a minimum of any type of mold repair yeah uh, yeah minimum. yes i i would say the very lowest that you're expecting if i don't have to remove anything it's probably a thousand dollars because there's mm. just a lot of things that we have to do we have to come back for multiple days we right. have to it's set probably those equipment, multiple trips monitor mm. Mm. yeah we have to clean um you know we have to ha make sure our, our technicians have proper ppe because they're breathing in mold every day which is right. also very dangerous right oh you yeah. know i didn't even think about the health of your technicians right? yeah so they're so, like in that per they're in the the worst environments all the time. The worst. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. So I can definitely understand, you know, the price there as and the multiple trips spoke out to me the most because absolutely you know, where we actually lose out on inspections all the time is you know, we try to get everything done in one trip, but mm -hmm. whenever you have to go that second time, that's yep. when it gets really expensive for us. Yeah, all yeah. of our work is usually at least a three-day process wow yeah, so, so, so at like least remove dry yep and then and treat, then treat and, and then, then, then i mean back. to put she rock back everyone knows you can't put she rock back in a day yeah so, sometimes <laughs> yeah. but you gotta but, paint it but, then yeah so it's at least two days yeah two-day process <laughs> yeah yeah and making sure that everything matches yeah I, yeah that is a process it's a long process especially when you have to remove materials so what's the most expensive job that you've done? Uh, so um, the vacant house will probably get up there. We're still working on it though. And these things are just accumulating. Right. Um, all, I would say the these mold remediations can get upwards of, you know, 50,000, 60,000 with no reconstruction. Right. Okay. So that's just you removing, removing the material, drying it out and treating cleaning it. it. Yep. You got to remove all of the materials. You have to clean everything. You need to air scrub. You need to HEPA vacuum everything multiple times. Right. You need to seal everything and then reconstruction can start. So yeah, they can get upwards. It depends on the size of that's the building. 000, that's 150,000 plus if you're doing the uh, reconstruction. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, easily. Yeah, and that's probably not even worth the home value if it's like that. I, a lot of times for houses, it is not. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> so bulldoze the home. <laughs> yeah, so like this is actually kind of a unique story that applies to that same situation of vacant. You know, our our Galveston inspector, um, he retired. We miss him. Uh, mm -hmm. He's Randy. Um, he did an inspection, and like you said, he walked in the home, and it was like, that perfect environment it just felt he felt funny right you know it felt he felt the musty smell but there the home was freshly painted oh. and so he was just like man i can't see anything i don't know what's going on but you know it's something's off in the air and so what he did is he removed a few outlets and then he saw that um black ring in around the edge of the outlet and he's like hey this is something you want to get fixed and we called our our mold uh inspector mm -hmm. she went out there and she said that it was going to need like three hundred thousand dollars worth of work because those galveston houses are on piers and oh it's, yeah it's not an easy project no and and it was like creating this perfect vacuum like coming from underneath the home and they weren't they didn't have the acs on they were off and mm -hmm. and it was just, yeah so it gets very expensive i bet pretty quick too pretty like you quickly said, because you said that mold can grow in like 14 days yeah so you turn off your hvac in that perfect environment for 14 days you're you're asking for it oh yeah and houston is always a perfect environment yeah i bet so say you're a common homeowner or an inspector i know we kind of hit this a little bit um, and we talked about you know musty smells but is like is there any other way that you could identify mold you know and i know like sometimes people will cover it up with like paint or a lot of uh -huh. air fresheners in a home but uh -huh. like 
like guaranteed where you go in, you're like, I know I'm going to find mold here most of the time. Yeah. So a lot of times it's, I would ask questions first, like, has there ever been any water damage in the home? Things like that. Um, besides just visual evidence, visual evidence we see a lot. Um, if the baseboards are separating, okay, um, and or the crown molding, or you see any type of bubbling, um, you can pretty much guarantee that there's some sort of mold. So you try to focus on like you know the wet areas, but look yeah. at the cosmetics of just. Mm -hmm. just you're talking just a little separation you know just the caulking is starting to come loose or yeah yeah not just foundation and stuff no the, the baseboards are all they always give it away yeah and, except for like those those heavy wood ones but yeah those the the fake ones the, those bubble up like immediately <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. yeah and you'll see bubbles in the um it and the baseboards and really any separation that you can see crown molding, baseboards, um, anything like that Look around the vents. Oh, if right. it's, you know, looks black or there's a lot of dust, I, I would say. Oh, like shooting out the edges. Yeah. Because yeah. it's pulling in the attic area and throwing it in the home. Yeah. Right. So, um, you know, that is, that is, I mean, those are a lot of common signs, but it's funny. Mm -hmm. It's like as a home inspector, you see that all the time. So you mm -hmm. just don't want to reduce the amount of severity that could actually be cause of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't, you know, I see the, the duct separated and we just kind of casually write it up. You know, you know, you need to have your duct serviced and fixed because you're throwing in the warm air into your property all the time. But it's, yeah, maybe we should like stress it a little bit more. Be like, hey, if this isn't fixed, this can cause like some mold issues. To the yeah. It, it, and what happens is the spores just get trapped in the ducts. Mm -hmm. So then if there's another water event that might happen, it's gonna spread. Oh I, oh, I understand. So, like, say you do have like a small water leak in your bathroom, yeah. real small, real small. But it, the mold's not developing. But you're pulling the the spores are just sitting up there waiting, and then you blow it, and it hits that. They wet can spot be dormant they... for a really, really long time, um, and then if you have a water event, um, they can reactivate, come back to life. <laughs> yeah. <That's... laughs> Yeah, so there's there's waiting, yeah, dormant, yeah, to get you. If you have the right environment, mold spores can be dormant for such a long time. And again, there might be mold behind sheetrock that didn't come all the way through. Right. Um. I mean, it happens all the time. Right. Right. So interesting. So, um, I know I talked about painting and you know the air fresheners. Mm -hmm. And what would be like another way that most of the time people like say they're putting their home up for sale mm -hmm. would they be covering up the issues because as home inspectors that's like our biggest fear and i mean we run into it all the time mm -hmm. where people are like intentionally covering things up but they didn't intentionally cover things up and then after the people move in they're like hey how did you catch this i was like well i mean you just described it it's patched painted yeah you know but is there like a way other than the you know they replace the baseboards uh-huh and they made it look as clean as possible. What what other like key notes or key things that are like, hey, this is probably a cover up job? I would probably just ask questions about. Um, but even the questions, I mean, sometimes we don't even get that information. That's true. That's you know, true. So, so are we just screwed? You know, like it's hard to tell. Um, it's hard to tell unless it really depends on you know how that house makes you feel like you said like you might walk in there and it looks fine but you have that headache and like the cough and the the you, the smell it's hard to if you're in a place long enough it's hard to cover up the smell i oh, feel gotcha. yeah okay. so it even goes back to like that randy situation where yeah it's like he just felt funny the entire time but the house looks so clean he's like no, right this is something you want to look and he saved those clients, you know, 300 grand or something like that. Yeah. You know, like. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's really what it is. Um, you know, you can have, if you're looking at buying a house, spend some time in there. You know what I yeah. mean? I have multiple people come in because again, it, the mold will affect everybody differently. Mm -hmm. So, um, you might have someone come in here and say like, it smells weird or like it makes my throat feel weird or, you know. Um, but it's really hard to tell. 
Yeah, that that's actually, you know, that's just one of our things as home inspectors. And it's always my biggest fear is uh-huh. like always missing something. You know, we're human. We're going yeah. to miss it. But it's just like when the seller intentionally covered something up. Yeah. And then it comes back to us. And it's just like, man, and it, if I could, there was like a key thing about mold other than like having a headache or you know, moving slower. Yeah, I mean, an air sample. I mean, you could do an air sample, refer an air sample, but you would probably have to do that like every time. Right. And, you know, and every it would always probably come back somewhat positive in Houston. <laughs> yeah, so they really just have to do it outside versus inside. Mm-hmm. So, um, and yes, there is mold everywhere in Houston. It's yeah. just there are certain indicators of like this is elevated and this is not normal. Yeah. So just a just a key recap. It's just like you always want to remove the moisture. Yep. And if you have mold, it's not just you can't just you cannot just clean it with bleach you can't yeah. you can't just clean it with bleach yeah. the key thing is also like that hvac system like we talked about that your humidity should be under 60 percent, ideally around 40 right. so you want to make sure your hvac system is working properly right um and and in houston especially you know there are things that help like a dehumidifier in your bathroom helps um, it can avoid a lot of problems. You can install your whole HVAC system with those now too. Yeah, so. the HVAC system, you can do like the, I know there's HVAC systems with like the UV light right. that will help. By the way, those are always broken. Are they? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Yes. Ooh, yikes. So if you do see that UV light system that she's bringing up, make sure that you um, just pretty much write it up <laughs> yeah. because they're always broken because no one really goes in their attic to check on oh, the bulb of course. and whatnot and who's looking at it yeah nobody's in their attic <laughs> yeah. we are in their attic right so it's like <laughs> once every five years when the inspector shows up and you decide to sell your home yeah that's when that's when it's broken that's why i always <laughs> i recommend routine maintenance to people if you're routinely maintenancing your house yeah. having an hvac person come out and just check Right. The, a yearly checkup, uh, having your plumber come out and check, see what's going on, you know. Exactly. You're going to be okay. Nice. So uh, we're coming close to the end of the podcast. And uh, one thing I always like to do is let them, you know, how do they find you? You know, what's, yeah. the, what's the best way for them to like get your information? Mm-hmm. You know, what areas do you service? Mm-hmm. And you did talk about the other services that you provide, but you know, just give them a recap on it again. Yeah, so uh, you guys can find us at restoration1ofcentralhouston.com. Uh, that's the number one. Um, our phone number is 832-916-3060, and we are 24-7. 365. <laughs> All of the fun things. Um, you would actually have to be 365, right? Yeah, yeah you yeah. get those 3 a.m. phone calls, huh? Yeah, I get them. Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, we, we had a, a pretty big job this year on Christmas Eve. It was oh, like, oh man, my house is flooding on Christmas Eve. Can you come help me? <laughs> Yes, of course we can. It's always the septic system. Was it the septic system? This was a pipe burst. Oh, okay. Yeah, pipe burst right through the ceiling. Really fun times. Um, So we do water damage remediation, fire damage remediation, um, obviously mold remediation. We are a licensed um, licensed mold remediation contractor. So if you have over 25 contiguous square feet of mold, you need a licensed mold remediation contractor. I mean, that's pretty easy to get. I mean, that's a lot of mold, actually. It's a lot of mold, but (laughs) um, even if it's like in the same room, if you're seeing spots in different areas, behind it is always the problem. Got you. Um, So we also do um, biohazard cleanup, trauma, crime scene cleanup, all of those fun things. That that's a whole different podcast, I would assume. Yes, <laughs> a, a very different one. <laughs> oh, that's an interesting line of work. Yes, yeah. it's all the fun things. I always tell people we do all the fun things. Yeah, I've seen some crazy things. Nice. So, oh, uh, did you give them your phone number? Or yeah. So, um, Restoration One of Central Houston. Our phone number is eight three two nine one six three zero six zero. And again, we're available all the time if you are not in the houston area we service all of the greater houston area um, but if you're in a different state or something like that you can go to restoration1.com and type in your zip code and they will connect you with the closest restoration one nice and yeah then if they have any questions you is it okay if they shoot you an email like yeah. about mold specific items or anything like absolutely. that? absolutely so my email is grace 
G-R-A-C-E dot medley, M-E-D-L-E-Y, at restoration, the number one dot com. Nice. Well, yeah. thank you, Grace, for yeah. coming in. <laughs> Super uh, fun. It was a good podcast. <laughs> and, um, and again, uh, she's really good at marketing, too. So maybe uh, the next podcast, when she comes back, you and I can talk about marketing techniques. Oh, yes. Yes, because you, you follow a lot of the same marketing thing that we do. Mm -hmm. But, you know, home inspectors, I think... That, there's a lot of really good home inspectors out there. Yeah. But they're terrible at marketing. Yeah. So, like, they should be marketing to restoration companies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, you sent us quite a bit of work. Yeah. Yeah. I just said, uh, people are like, who do I have to, who do I have to call? I'm like. This guy. Of course. <laughs> yeah. All right. Sounds good. Well, um, we'll make sure that you keep an eye out for the next podcast and please hit that like and subscribe button and follow us along. See you guys. See ya.